good day viewers today we'll be looking at the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions one we'll be looking at the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions of common trigonometric functions now what we mean inverse trigonometric function we means we mean functions such as sine inverse of x this kind of functions are what we are talking of if we have y equal to sine inverse of x then our dy dx would be equal to what now let's start with sine x we are just going to use a simple technical method to get our derivative of inverse trigonometric functions now let's get started if y equal to sine x if y equal to sine inverse of x it means x is equal to sine y i mean obviously x would be equal to sine y because y is equal to the sine inverse of x then if we should find the x dy that would be equal to cos y but this is not our answer because we are looking for dy dx and of course we all know that dy dx is equal to 1 over dx dy so therefore dy dx will be equal to 1 over cos y but we know in trigonometric functions that sine square y plus cos square y is equal to 1. So what I'm trying to do now is to put back this function in a way that it must relate to sine square y because we started with sine. Now, cos square y would now be equal to 1 minus sine square y. And by taking the square root, cos y is equal to square root of 1 minus sine square y so all we need to do is substitute it back in this formula in this equation so therefore our dy dx that was once 1 over cos y would now be equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus sine square y and from up here sine y is equal to x so sine square y will be equal to x squared so therefore the derivative of sine inverse of x dx would be equal to 1 over square root 1 minus x square now this is brilliant this is a very straightforward but technical way to get the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions so let's look at the derivative of cos inverse of x now. If we were to find the derivative of cos inverse of x, we we'll use the same technique. Let y be equal to cos inverse of x. Then our x would be equal to cos y. Our dx dy would be equal to minus sine y but our dy dx would be equal to minus 1 over sine y from the trigonometric identity that sine square y plus cos square y is equal to 1 sine y would be equal to square root of 1 minus cos square y Therefore, so therefore, our dy dx, which was minus 1 over sine y, would be equal to 1 over minus 1 over square root of 1 minus cos square y. And earlier in this proof, we stated that x equal to cos y. So cos square y will be equal to x square. 
So therefore, the derivative of cos inverse of x, the x would be equal to minus 1 over 1 minus x squared. Because x squared cos square x cos square y is equal to x squared. So let's do that of tan inverse x. If y is equal to tan inverse x, then x is equal to tan y. And dx dy is equal to sec square y. Then dy dx would be equal to 1 all over sec square y. And from trigonometric identity, sec square y is equal to 1 plus tan square y. Therefore, dy dx is equal to 1 all over 1 plus tan square y. And our tan, tan, x equal, tan y equal to x, therefore tan square y equal to x square. So therefore, derivative of tan inverse x dx would be equal to 1 all over 1 plus x square. Now we're going to move on to that of cot inverse of x. If y equal to cot inverse x, then x is equal to cot y. So therefore, dx dy would be equal to minus cos x square y. That's because the derivative of cot x is minus cosec square. Then our dy dx would be equal to the inverse of this minus 1 over cosec x square y. But for according to trigonometric identity, cosec x, cosec y square or cosec square y is equal to 1 plus cot square y. Therefore, our dy dx would be equal to minus 1 all over 1 plus cot square y, which would be equal to cot square y, cot y is equal to x, therefore cot square y will be equal to x square, then minus 1 all over 1 plus x square. So therefore, our derivative of cot inverse of x dx is equal to minus 1, 1 plus x squared. I hope we understood how we got this. We are now going to move on to sec inverse of x. If y is equal to sec inverse of x, x would then be equal to sec y. And dx dy would be equal to sec y tan y. This is still using differential calculus. We are going to now look for the inverse. dy dx would now be equal to 1 all over sec y tan y. And by doing this now, we are going to arrive at this. Here we have sec. We have sec here. So what we are going to do, we are aiming at turning this tan into a function that is going to relate to sec. And that's an easy one. We know that sec square y minus tan square y equal to 1. Therefore, tan square y equal to sec square y minus 1. By finding the square root of both sides, tan square y equal to square root 
of sec square y minus 1. And there we have it. Our tan y is equal to square root of sec square y minus 1. And we have tan y here. So we've got rid of the tan and we've related it to sec. So therefore, dy dx will be equal to would be equal to 1 all over sec y tan y. But we've established that tan y is equal to square root of sec square y minus 1. So this would be equal to 1 all over sec y square root sec square y of minus 1. From here, x is equal to sec y. So sec square y will be equal to x square. Substituting that in our equation, dy dx will be equal to 1 all over x square root x square minus 1. So therefore, the derivative of sec inverse of x, dx, will be equal to 1 all over x square root x square minus 1. Now let's go to our last trigonometric function we have on the list, cosec inverse x. If y is equal to cosec inverse x, then x would be equal to cosec y. And then dx dy would be equal to minus cosec y cot y. For all these differential coefficients of trigonometric functions, that's if you want to know why the derivative of cos cosec y led to this and the derivative of how other trigonometric function led to their various differential coefficients, you can check my other videos that I've done on the derivative of trigonometric functions. Now let's move on. From here, if we inverse this, dy dx would be equal to 1 over minus 1 over cosec y cot y. Now, we are going to do, we are going to change this cot y to a, to an equation that relates cos sec y. And that would be from the relationship that cot square y minus cos x square y equal to minus 1. This is a relationship in trigonometry too. And the proof of this would be I would show that on my coming videos. So, by taking this to the other side, we'll be left with cot square y equal to cosec square y minus 1. Finding the square root of both sides, cot y will now become equal to square root of cosec square y minus 1. Then the y dx will now become equal to minus 1 all over cosec y square root cosec square y minus 1. So we can, from here we can see that x is equal to cosec y and cosec y square would now be equal to x square. So therefore, dy dx would now be finally equal to minus 1 over x square root x square minus 1. So from all this, we can now derive a summary that we can get to the summary that the derivative of sine inverse of x is 1 over 1 minus square root of 1 minus x square and the derivative of cos inverse of x is minus 1 over square root 1 minus x square derivative of tan inverse of x is 1 over 1 plus x square derivative of cos inverse of y is 1 minus 1 over 1 plus x square 
derivative of sec inverse of x is 1 minus x square root x square minus 1 and finally the derivative of cosec inverse of x is minus 1 over x square root x square minus 1. I hope we understood how we derived this. It just involved some few major steps. You make y a function of x and then you differentiate with respect to y. You now inverse the, your derivative, then look for a relationship that relates your denominator with your initial function. Thank you very much for watching. Please ensure to subscribe to my channel, drop a like, and leave a comment. Thank you very much.